through faith alone. Many young men are sent forth to labor who do not understand the plan of salvation and what true conversion is. In fact, they need to be converted. We need to be enlightened on this point, and the ministers need to be educated to dwell more particularly upon the subjects which explain true conversion. All who are baptized are to give evidence that they have been converted. There is not a point that needs to be dwelt upon more earnestly, repeated more frequently, or established more firmly in the minds of all than the impossibility of fallen man meriting anything by his own best good works. Salvation is through faith in Jesus Christ alone. When this question is investigated, we are pained to the heart to see how trivial are the remarks of those who ought to understand the mystery of godliness. They speak so unguardedly of the true ideas of our brethren who profess to believe the truth and teach the truth. They come far short of the real facts as they have been laid open before me. The enemy has so entangled their minds in the mist and fog of earthliness and it seems so ingrained into their understanding that it has become a part of their faith and character. It is only a new conversion that can change them and cause them to give up these false ideas, for this is just what they are shown to me to be. They cling to them as a drowning man clings to a life preserver to keep them from sinking and making shipwreck of faith. Christ has given me words to speak. Ye must be born again, else you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, all who have the right understanding of this matter should put away their controversial spirit and seek the Lord with all their hearts. Then they will find Christ and can give distinctive character to their religious experience. They should keep this matter, the simplicity of true godliness, distinctly before the people in every discourse. This will come home to the heart of every hungry, thirsting soul who is longing to come into the assurance of hope and faith and perfect trust in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let the subject be made distinct and plain that it is not possible to affect anything in our standing before God or in the gift of God to us through creature merit. Should faith and works purchase the gift of salvation for anyone, then the Creator is under obligation to the creature. Here is an opportunity for falsehood to be accepted as truth. If any man can merit salvation by anything he may do, then he is in the same position as a Catholic to do penance for his sins. If man cannot, by any of his good works, merit salvation, then it must be holy of grace received by man as a sinner because he receives and believes in Jesus. It is wholly a free gift. Justification by faith is placed beyond controversy, and all this controversy is ended as soon as the matter is settled that the merits of fallen man and his good works can never procure eternal life for him.